In this video I'm going to build a 4-bit foot adder circuit. In a previous video which is linked to here I created a half adder from logic gates and I showed you how you could combine two half adders together to create a full adder. The nice thing about full adders is that they can be cascaded together so we can create a 4-bit full adder circuit or an 8-bit full adder circuit just by cascading the adders together. So let's look at an example of a 4-bit addition. 4 bits mean we have 2 to the power of 4 possible combinations or states. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16 and we can represent numbers from 0 to 15 using those 16 values. So if we look at the example on the left hand side of the page we see that we want to add two numbers together. The first number on the first row is 1001 0, 0, 1. so that's 8 plus 1 which is 9 in decimal. The number below that we want to add to it is 0001 0, 0, 1 to the base 2 which is also 1 in decimal. So the, the addition that we're trying to uh, carry out is 9 plus 1, so the result should be 10. If we look at the addition itself, we see that we start on the rightmost side, the lowest significant bit, and we do 1 plus 1, which gives us 0 with a carry of 1 to the next stage. At the next stage we go 0 plus 0 plus 1, which gives us 1 with a carry of 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 gives us 0 with a carry of 0, and 1 plus 0 plus 0 gives us 1 with a carry of 0. So the result is 1010, 0, 0, which is indeed 10 in decimal. I said that we need to use 4 full adders for this circuit. Now that's not strictly true. If we look at the rightmost and the least significant bit of this particular addition, we see that, well, there are only two inputs, the A and B of 1 and 1. There's no carry in from a previous stage. The IC that we use does have four full adders though in case that we wish to carry in a bit from a previous stage or to create an 8-bit adder using the 4-bit adders. If we look at the example on the right hand side of the page we see we have the number 1111 which is 15, 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 in base, in base 2 which is 15 in decimal. And we want to add to that we want to add 1 base 2 and 1 de in decimal. So we do the same, we perform the same set of operations. So we go to the least significant bit on the right hand side. So 1 plus 1 gives us 0 with a carry of 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 gives us 0 with a carry of 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 gives us 0 with a carry of 1. And finally, 1 plus 0 plus 1 gives us 0 with a carry of 1. Now, the value that we get on the leftmost side is our carry out. If our computer only had 4 bit resolution, what would happen here is that we would be saying 15 plus 1 is equal to 0. To carry out to the next stage we have to do something with that on a 4-bit computer either to flag that overflow has occurred and that something is wrong that we can't represent numbers greater than uh, 15 in our circuit. Otherwise we could be passing this as the input to a second 4-bit adder in order to create an 8-bit adder. So if we take the full adder as a block it has its inputs A, B and carry in and it has its outputs carry out and sum. If we just rotate it onto its side so that we can cascade them side by side we place four of these in a row. If we wrap this in a block to create the IC that we're looking at you can see that, well to create the four bit adder you can see that we can just bring the outputs outside, inputs and outputs outside of the block. So we can bring the A0, B0 S0 as our sum outside of the block and similarly for A1, B1 and the A2 and A3 and so on. The problem we have is we still haven't dealt with the carries. If you look at the carries we can just simply connect them together. So we can take the carry out from the stage 0 which is the least significant bit and we can provide that as an input into the stage 1 which is the second most least significant bit and so on right up onto the, onto, onto the uh, third stage. The final carry from C out from A0, A3, B3 and S3, the carry out in that stage, uh, carry out 3 if you like, can be, is the carry out of our 4 bit adder. And on the far side, the carry in to our first stage, even though I pointed out in the examples that we don't actually need a full adder if we're just using a 4 bit adder, well if we do provide a full adder here it allows us to have a carry in from a previous 4-bit uh, adder circuit. The way that we've laid out this circuit is functionally correct 
but it suffers from the ripple carry problem. If we're to examine what happens when we add two numbers together, in this case A is equal to 1111, which is 15 in decimal, and B is equal to 0001, which is 1 in decimal, we can see that the least significant bit on the right hand side full adder must be calculated first before we can calculate the value in the next full adder. So here we see that 1 plus 1 plus 0, which is the carry in, gives us a sum of 0 and a carry out of 1, which is passed to the next full adder. The same happens again in the next full adder and in the next and in the next. Now the problem with this is that, is that there's a delay. If you remember back to the discussions we had before on logic gates, you'll remember there's a small delay when a signal passes through a gate. So if we were to look at the first full adder, you'll see that there are three gates that the signal must pass through. So there's a delay of three times a small delay. The big problem with this is if we were to generate a 32-bit adder using this circuit form, then we'd have a small delay times 3 times 32, which is a small delay times 96, which is no longer a small delay and would limit the operating frequency of the circuit. For my circuit, I'm going to use a CD74HC283, which is a 4-bit adder with fast carry. Essentially, this means that there's a carry look ahead adder, where there's additional circuitry to detect if there's a carry rippling through the full adders. This means that the ripple delay problem is somewhat reduced and that multiple 74HC283s can be used together economically, which is the way it's described in the data sheet. There isn't too much else very important to note in the data sheet over what we've discussed already. You can see that there is a carry out triggered if the sum is greater than 15. It can be used for positive logic or negative logic operands. And the CD74HC283E is the version that I'm using. And you can see that it's a PDIP package, so it'll sit neatly in our breadboard. The pinout is displayed where we have our VCC ground, four lines for A, four lines for B, our input values, and four lines for our sum S. We also have one line for our carry in and one line for our carry out. So let's build a circuit to try it out. This is my circuit that allows me to add two 4-bit numbers together. Here's my output. This is the lowest significant bit to the most significant bit. And the yellow LED here represents the carry bit going forward. So on the left hand side here I have my first 4-bit my four, first four number, we'll call it A. And on this side here I have my second 4-bit number, we'll call it B. In this case here, this is the least significant bit of the B number, this is the least significant bit of the A number. So it means we can add these numbers together. I'm just using these, these dip switches just to be able to um, do this as, wire this as easily as possible. You'll also see that I've used in a resistor array above the switches. So on this side here, you can see that at the moment all the switches are down. This means that all the switches are off. So if we were to set one of these values to high, for example, this would be saying add 0000 plus 0001. And our output in this case is 0001. So in effect, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. Okay, no change there. If we were to change the next, uh, this switch high, you'll see that we now have 0 plus 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, which is 1 plus 2, which is 3. So 0, 0, 1, 1 says 0 plus 3, and we get an output of 3. If we were on the left-hand side now to enter a value, so if we were to say 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1 plus 3 should give us an output of 4, and you'll see here if I switch this here, you'll see that 1 plus 3 gives us an output of 0, 1, 0, 0, which is an output of 4. 1, 4, 0, 2's, 0, 1. So that's 0 plus 0 plus 4. Uh, plus no 8's. If we continue on, so if I was to then add in, uh, make this uh, 1 plus 7 in this case. So 1 plus 3, uh, sorry, for plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So 1 plus 7 in this case gives us an output of 1, 0, 0, 0, which is 1, which is, sorry, which is 8, okay? So an output of 1 plus 7 gives us an output of 8. If I was to continue on, I have to add more values. You can see, well, if we were to add in two more, we get an output of 10. So this is 0, 0, 1, 1, which is an input of 3, plus 0, 1, 1, 1, which is an input of 7. You'll see that gives us an output of 
zero one zero one zero, which is one eight zero four is one two. So eight plus two is ten. So three plus seven, decimal three plus decimal seven gives us an output of decimal ten. If we continue on again and we say, well, let, in this case, let's say, well, let's go take a step, uh, let's take a step back and, and, and deal with the largest resolution we can have. So at the moment, zero plus seven gives us an output of seven. Okay. If we were to say now zero plus fifteen, well, that gives us an output of fifteen. So let's have a look at what happens now if I add one more in. So zero plus uh, fifteen gives us an output of fifteen. One plus fifteen gives us an output of sixteen. Now the problem is we can't represent sixteen with a with a um, four bit number. So therefore we end up with zero 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 with a carry of one. Okay. Now this is not to be read as one uh, one sixteenth. We could we could treat it like that, but that's not really what it's about because we're only dealing with a resolution of four bit numbers. It means that this is to carry to the next stage. We can still see that it represents valid numbers though. For example, if we were to add in, um, in this case, 3 plus 15, well you could read it as 16 plus 2, which is 18. So 3 plus 15 is 18. We can read it that way. So you can see that's our circuit and it's working correctly and we're able to see that it adds two binary numbers together and we can see that we get the benefit of the carry um, bit here which shows us when the value, the sum of the two numbers is too great for 4-bit resolution display so we're able to carry the carry to the next stage.